uh, tantalizing evidence that there was pre-civilizations, uh, intelligent beings occupying our solar system before we came along. And of course on the Earth, there's a, just a whole slew of anomalies. You've got this ancient uh, hammer that was buried in rock that's been estimated to be like a million years old. You get the, oh, you get the Piri Reese map, you got crystal skulls, you got the Baghdad battery, you've got human handprints in rock that is prehistoric. You've got the round balls that are perfectly spherical in Guatemala, in Costa Rica. You got the vitrified forts in Ireland. All over the world, there's indication that there was human habitation, some sort of intelligent civilization going on long before we ever came along. And a common theme through all of these uh, cultures of the world is flight. You've got the flying boats of the Egyptians, the flying dragons of the Chinese, the flying Bahamas of the Hindus, on and on and on, and all the way down through history. We'll come back to that thought. Uh, in Italy uh, and in India, you see all these depictions of things that look nothing more than flying saucers. Saucer-shaped objects, and of course, need I mention Ezekiel in the Bible with his flying fiery wheel. Hello. Uh, we've got the Antithicara mechanism, which was found in an ancient Greek ship. And uh, when they finally got around to studying it and taking it apart and got x-rays and could look inside it, it's an ancient computer. And then you all have probably seen these uh, little gold statuesque things that come from Columbia. How many of you all have seen these before? Yeah, I see a lot of them. All right, well, what you may not know is this German team uh, built a model of this because uh, the theory was these are uh, uh, depictions of aircraft. And of course, the conventional scientists go, oh, no, 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 these are bees uh, and insects. Well, these guys took the measurements, extrapolated it on out, built a working model, and guess what? It flew like a charm. These are depictions of aircraft that come from two and 3,000 years ago in Colombia. And of course, so there's all the evidence that there was some kind of civilization on the Earth long before we know about it. And of course, that brings us to the legends of Atlantis, the long lost continent of Atlantis. Well, where was Atlantis? Well, today they argue all over the place. Uh, they say it was, uh, in, of course, an island in the middle of the Atlantic. Another good theory is that it was actually Antarctica before the Earth tilted and it got covered over with ice. Uh, the, some say it's in the uh, Caribbean uh, and near Bimini, and they have found, uh, you know, huge stone roads and big columns there underwater. Uh, and uh, there's even a theory that it was in the South China Sea. Uh, they've also found underwater, I don't have this mark, but off the coast of Japan, they have found off of Okinawa, they have found underseas uh, columns and, and uh, walls and stuff. So, uh, you know, they all argue with each other. No, it's the island of Santorina. No, it's a uh, Crete. You know, well, I'm here to tell you, I think they're all right. I think what we're dealing with here is a worldwide, highly technological civilization that existed thousands of years ago. And we are just now rebuilding and relearning the technology and the knowledge that these folks had because at some point, either through warfare or through natural disasters or a combination of both, uh, that earlier civilization was destroyed. And then, uh, because everything after that degraded, you've got the Egyptian civilization, which we, a, a lot of us older folks, we were taught that's the world's greatest first civilization. No. It was simply a hand-me-down from, from Sumer. And the Sumer civilization, just like the Egyptian civilization, started off as a full-blown, highly technological, very advanced and sophisticated civilization and then devolved. And the Egyptians the same way. The earlier dynasties have the better jewelry, built the better pyramids, did all this stuff, and then it just degraded as it went along because they were losing the knowledge. 
And so the anomalies continue, including the discoveries of giant bones, of giant humanoid type people all around the world, in the Middle East, in North America, the Indian mounds in the Mississippi Valley. And this, uh, of course, giants are nothing new. We, we still get giants with us today, and yet, and yet these bones have been picked up, hauled away, put in the Smithsonian Institution, and they disappear. And uh, you, you, it's like y'all are thinking, well, I've never heard of this. No, because they will not talk about this. This is part of our hidden history. And yet, all around the world, they have found these giant bones. And of course, if you go on the internet, they're going to tell you that these are all uh, just fakes. And I'm sure some of them are. But all of them are not. And we're not being told about the whole thing. Uh, I have seen the newspaper articles from the 1800s where they're reporting on the discovery of these giant bones of ancient human type people long before we came along. Uh, and it's all reported on and then it just goes away. Smithsonian, we all think of that as this great scientific institution, which it is. But what you don't realize is it's an agency of the United States government. They own and control it. So they, you know, they're not telling you about UFOs. Why should they tell you about giant human bones and our true history? Um, even, uh, here's the, a newspaper article um, from 1909 where they were discovering Egyptian artifacts in the Grand Canyon. And I myself have uh, talked to a fellow who said he was backpacking in the north, uh, northern part of the Grand Canyon when he came across these giant concrete platforms. And he theorized, and I tend to agree with him, that this is where they had the uh, winches and the derricks and stuff to, to uh, take these Egyptian artifacts out of there uh, and uh, get them out of these caves that, that line the northern part of the Grand Canyon. Well, wait a minute, what happened to all of that? went to the Smithsonian and disappeared into the black hole. And yet, interestingly enough, even today, if you go look at a detailed map, you'll find that uh, in the area on the north side of the Grand Canyon, we find the Tower of Set, the Tower of Ra, the Horns Temple, the Osiris Temple, and the Isis Temple. They've got Egyptian names. Well, where'd they come from? Because they found the artifacts. But you had never been told that. And now when I go to Egypt uh, and I was visiting Seti's uh, palace there in Abydos, uh, the, guy, the guy says, hey, come out back, I'll show you the Osirian. And I said, well, what's that? Back behind Seti's palace, down underground, so it was there before Seti's palace was built, is the Osirian. Look at these giant blocks, totally clear cut, no hieroglyphics on it. Uh, and stacked up, looks a lot like Stonehenge. This is evidence of a very highly technological civilization that predates the Egyptians. Here's some other pictures of it. And you can see the, 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 these stones right here weigh several hundred tons. You know, how did they, how did these primitive people, pre-Egyptians, you know, how did, how were they able to move all this around? Uh, it's got an aqueduct. Uh, it's an incredible place. And of course, we all know about the Egyptian technology, these things which nobody quite uh, understands, under the, although they do have some sort of power cord that reaches to the Jed Pillar, which was, according to their writings, their power source. Wait a minute. And of course, uh, there, there I am in the Great Pyramid, and uh, the Great Pyramid is really fascinating because we're, we're told it was built by the Egyptians and it's the tomb of, uh, of uh, Cheops. But, uh, but uh, throughout Egypt, everywhere you go, uh, all the palaces and all the tombs, every square inch is filled with hieroglyphics. You go in the Great Pyramid, nothing. It's not there. This was not a tomb. I think Christopher Dunn was probably right. He was a British scientist who says that the Great Pyramid was a power plant. They were drawing the energy out of the earth and they were using this pyramid to transmit energy around the world. Uh, I just threw this in the end because I thought it was pretty interesting. There's 
a little weird orb that was following me around. <laughs> I guess they want to know what I was finding out. Uh, also in Egypt was this ancient, ancient gate. And up at the top of it, uh, you can see this little figure with a big head and big eyes. I, I can't see this very well. I don't know if y'all can, maybe further back you can see it a little better, but it looks nothing more than like one of the little alien greys. Uh, it, once the publicity came out, and uh, I talked about it, other people talked about it, and now that gate's been taken down. No. Okay. And I think I know, I got a friend who thinks she knows where it might be, but it's gone. You can't see that. You know, again, what they're keeping from you. Uh, Karnak, a Neolithic cathedral. This is over in the coast of France. 3,500 years back, and they've got all these stones. This is, again, some of the more ancient uh, places, and some of you know about Baalbek in Lebanon, which supports the Roman city of uh, Heliopolis. Uh, th some of these stones are like 800 tons, all right? And uh, Sitchin said this was before the Romans built their, uh, their uh, palace there, that uh, this was a launch pad for space vehicles. Um, what's interesting is that the bunkers will tell you, oh, well, we can lift rocks like that. Okay, I looked into this pretty carefully, and here's the truth. Yeah, there's one or two heavy, heavy industrial cranes in the world today that might be able to lift an 800-ton rock, but none of them can move it. They don't move, okay? Because when you build something on wheels or something that's light enough where you can move it, it can't lift it. But these people did. Something's going on. Uh, here's one of the uh, obelisks there at Baalbek. You can see the size of it with all these people standing there. It never quite got put up. But this one weighs a th over a thousand tons. So we don't have anything to pick that up. And yet they were making it. They were getting ready to put it up. We don't know why it all stopped. Uh, some of you may be familiar with the uh, Coral Castle in Florida. Uh, <coughs> this guy, Ed Leedskillen, uh, who was able to put these huge rocks up and huge carvings of marble and, and uh, volcanic uh, material. Um, and nobody could figure out how he did it, except uh, uh, some kids once saw him. Uh, a, a big uh, truckload arrived of this heavy material, and he told the workmen to go take lunch. And when they went away, uh, they came back, and he had it. Everything was unloaded, and everything was up. And they couldn't figure out how this one old guy did that. Well, some kids happened to be watching, and they said they saw him, and he had what looked like ice cream cones in his hand. So remember that. Uh, here is, um, this is uh, Easter Island. Now, we've all seen the heads. Most people don't realize that those statues go all the way down. And the reason you don't know that is because they cover it over. They cover it all up, so you just say, well, it's just a head, you know, that's one of their gods, and they threw it up there, you know. And yet, you study the, uh, the legends from Rapa Nui, which is what they, the natives call Easter Island, uh, and they say that these were depictions of these ancient giant people who lived there before they came along. Another stuff you don't get told about. Gobleki Tepe, this is in Turkey. This. Look at this. Look at, look at these monolithic stones. Um, this is called the Turkish Stonehenge. And yet, let me skip ahead here. Look at the intricate carvings and stuff and the detail on this huge complex. And this predates Stonehenge by 7,000 years. So there's stuff going on that we don't know about. Uh, we all, now we get to the idea of the strange skulls, and of course we know the Egyptians wore these elongated caps, and here's Nefertiti, you know. Well, <laughs> was that just a tall hat, or was that covering an elongated skull? Because elongated skulls are not unknown. And um, without going into a big explanation, the uh, debunkers will tell you, oh, well, that's where they put boards on their head and they, babies and they strapped it so that their, their, their uh, heads would be long, uh, oh, so that they could uh, imitate the, uh, their gods, uh, which is true. 
and that did happen. But why would they be doing that? And, and what are they imitating? Did they, did the gods have these elongated heads? And uh, apparently so. Uh, but their skulls have been found with elongated criminal, craniums, horns, fang teeth, no teeth.